In this episode, we deal with a cow with a very sore back left foot. I drink some coffee, give you some updates, and Mrs. HGP cooks some awesome pancakes. This is the Hoof GP. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. You guys probably think I haven't been anywhere, but actually I've been off work for almost two weeks. That's right, the Hoof GP takes some holidays and Craig's actually off for another week still. Hmm, the life of an employee. <sighs> Can't be a Costa coffee in the morning, can you? Oh. Got some updates. Yes, I have. The new crush, the new shoot, the new cow catching machine. I haven't mentioned it in a while. Things have changed, they've progressed. Things do change, things do progress. Can't tell you exactly what it is, but I can tell you that it is coming the second week of September. So it will be here in about six weeks time, possibly seven, definitely six or seven. And this black beauty in the background is for the new crush. This is a Ford Ranger Raptor. Oh, and she's a beauty, look at her. Ooh, sexy. Hello, Steve. Hello, <laughs> boy. Are you coming to work today, are you? Hello. Oh, Mia's not feeling very well just now. I'm not sure what's up with her. Yeah, so we have a Ford Ranger Raptor. We are not getting rid of the Nissan Navara, believe it or not, despite how much I absolutely hate, love it. So it's a 2020 Ford Ranger Raptor, which means we can jump it, we can tow with it, we can off-road rally it if we wanted. But really, it's for towing the new crush. And I can't wait to get it behind it. This thing's nice as well, look. Anyway, Craig Boy is not here, and we have a couple of month billiards to trim. So let's get cracking, get there, and find out what problems we've got to deal with today. Oops, I forgot something. Come on, boy! Come on, boy! Pick up. Now we can begin. So when I first got to today's farm, I actually ended up doing a bit of an impromptu child's hoof trimming lesson, which I absolutely loved. But it meant I didn't film anything until this cow came in. And she was incredibly lame. This is actually the first, and actually probably the only, cow that's shown any signs of lameness on this farm. So it's the only one I'm showing you guys today. The rest are um, beautifully boring. Before I trim it though, let's have a little walk and talk around this foot. So clearly she is overgrown on both of these feet. You can see this part of the horn is protruding and that's because this wears much more slowly than the inner solar horn because this hoof horn here, this wall horn, is much, much harder and this is the weight bearing surface of a cow's foot. We call this part the white line. Yes, it's dirty. It's more brown than white right now and that's because this part allows more dirt and debris to be seeped or to ingress into the white line and that causes problems. But if you look from here, you can clearly see how much higher this wall horn is than the solar horn here, because this is wearing or shedding away actually. And that's why you can see this kind of white pithy stuff. This is actually falling away because of the dry environment this cow is in. She lives outside. I know everybody thinks these cows are housed all the time, but most of the cows that I trim actually live in the fields during the summer months. But in the winter, it's far too cold for them. She has a lot of excess horn in here, which will be causing problems and a lot of loose scabby stuff, which is probably hiding some sort of issue. But actually, the main issue for this cow can't be seen right now. She has a growth up in between her feet. It's really hard to see on camera, but you can see the projection sticking right down from between her feet. So we need to do something about that. We're not gonna cut it away. That is one thing we are definitely not gonna do and we never ever would because that is a live part of this cow's tissue and she would need some sort of anesthesia to do that. And I'm not qualified for that kind of deal. So let's crack on and get her trimmed. Right out of the bed, I knew I loved you. You had that sparkle in your eyes Some kind of shiver in your presence Unlike no other I had met You got me spinning out of context Would you go for a pedicure and then just decide to take a in the middle of it? I know I wouldn't. How rude. So this cow does indeed have a growth in between her two claws and we can call it a few different things. Some people will call it a granuloma or a tyloma or even a hyperplasia. Hyperplasia basically meaning hypergrowth of the skin in between the two digits and this can happen for a number of reasons. Either the cow has a genetic abnormality, in other words her father or mother had it and therefore she also has it. 
but also something could have happened deep within the tissue up between her claws which caused this hypergrowth. We'll never truly know why she has it, but we definitely do know that it's causing her a bit of pain right now. But as we're just about to find out, it's definitely not the only issue this cow has with this particular foot. So we're not taking any of this part of her foot away because this is where we want to transfer the weight from here onto. She had too much weight on here and that causes cows problems. If we removed any of this, we'd have to take even more height from here just to get them the same. So we leave this horn here. And as you can see, it's not in bad shape anyway. Despite what you might be thinking right now, believe it or not, that knife is extremely sharp. It's just that this cow's feet are very, very hard indeed, because right now she's outside grazing on the wild, wild grass of southwest Scotland. Regardless of their sharpness or apparent bluntness, they've just uncovered the real reason this cow is lame. And you can clearly see here there is a slight problem. You can see there's a tract going from here, projecting up towards her heel area. Now I'm not sure if it comes to a real issue, but this is why I said this part of the hoof horn may have been causing a problem before. I'll be honest, I wasn't really expecting that. Did you see how that popped because of the pressure that was underneath? I know that we're going to need a block to get the affected area completely off the ground, so I go ahead and attach it as soon as I possibly can. This allows the glue to dry for as long as possible and therefore never fall off. In my quest to remove every shred of loose and detached horn, we draw a bit of blood, but as you can see, it quickly escalates to the point where I need to hold the blue paper onto the bleeding area as tightly as I possibly can for around eight or nine minutes. You see, it's not always beautiful. This helps the blood to coagulate and eventually forms a barrier so that the bleeding stops completely. This will work, but it is extremely time consuming. So I fast forwarded it a little. Now all that remains is to take away those hard edges so that they don't insult and therefore hurt that growth that's sticking down between the two. We dress it with Repiderma to make sure that no dermatitis affects the area and let her rip to her chip. Let's see how she's walking now. As you're just about to see, she's not walking perfectly, but look how she's using that block. All of the weight is now on there, giving her relief from the pain and time to heal. And just like that, we're back at HQ and Mrs HGUP has informed me she has a little surprise for me. Pretty sure I know what it is. And if I'm right, she's a good old lady. We are from Daddy! Look, usually she's annoyed because I get her in the morning. This is the afternoon and she's all done, like she looks nice. I'm not done, my hair's a mess. Daddy! It's not a mess. Well it's Daddy! a mess, but it's like a nice mess. Hi. Hello! Ooh, Mrs. HGP. Anyway, I've got pancakes to serve and I thought you said there was bacon. Yeah. Oh, there is bacon. I have pancakes, syrup and bacon. So I'm going to love you and leave you and catch you on the next one. Remember, if you haven't already subscribed or followed or liked the page, then think about doing it right now. Cheers. Catch you later, guys. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.